Why I'm carving birds is uh, I guess I just started doing that and became infatuated with the bird world and I've learned a tremendous amount about birds. I was not a bird watcher to begin with, but since starting doing this, I, of course, have a keen interest in all birds. And uh, um, there's so many birds, you could probably carve a different one every week and not get every species in the world. I sort of started doing this. My wife started me in on this. She bought me a little kit some years ago for Christmas and I made a little duck and then about the same time I was visiting a daughter in um, Richmond, Virginia, was at the University of Richmond and um, they were having an art show and there was a fellow there who'd carved some decoys and I went home and thought, you know I can do that. And that's sort of how I started dabbling and uh, I did it mostly just for an escape and a, you know, to kind of get rid of some of the tension from work. And, and it just uh, became a passion with me. This probably found its origins in the old uh, decoy carvers from years ago. Uh, and um, <clears throat> there were a set of brothers called the Ward Brothers back about uh, the early 1940s that um, sort of got discovered. And they, they took their decoys, they were barbers uh, for a living, and um, in Salisbury, Maryland, which is on the Chesapeake Bay, and they, they started really fancying up their decoys, carving them with more and more feathers and painting them better and better. And some of the um, art collectors from New York area um, sort of found these or discovered them, started buying them up, collecting them, and from there, people uh, spend a lot of time now hunting for antique decoys. In the last two decades, wildfowl carving has risen from utility to high art. It involves two, two disciplines. You have to be pretty good at sculpturing things, and then you have to uh, be able to paint. And so it's, uh, uh, it's a, a dual discipline art form, so to speak. But it's grown significantly since I started 20 years ago um, or so, just dabbling in this. Um, it has, uh, I have seen the um, competence and quality of the works just uh, improved dramatically. Uh, some beautiful things are being done now. And the art collectors are really taking note and there are some artists that are really sought after for their pieces and command uh, quite a high uh, uh, premium for their work, of course. I spent a lot of time researching the material first. I, I, I uh, read about the birds, I look at as many pictures and gather together as many different photographs as, as I can do. I will look at the birds in nature and observe them. And that's where I kind of get the idea of a pose or how I would like to present that bird uh, uh, in a piece. Uh, and you're, you're just presenting a, an instant of that bird's life. Birds move almost all the time. Just in the way of review, a little bit. And we started a couple days ago, the block of wood, and we traced our patterns on the block of wood, like so, like so. It takes a lot of hours uh, uh, to create a piece. Um, I finished a Harris hawk here recently, and I know I have over 500 hours on that bird. Um, I'm doing a seminar right now with some students. Uh, we're just carving a, a, a little chickadee. And uh, gosh, we'll have uh, probably 40 to 50 hours in on that little tiny bird about that big by the time we're finished with the carving and painting it. So they're getting an appreciation of how many hours it takes to do this. Now that translates, when you're selling a piece, of course, that uh, people aren't going to pay astronomical fees for something. So it's kind of hard in this art form to make your hours of work translate into money. <laughs> so I'm fortunate I don't have to make a living at this. I have a good time with it. Too. There are um, a number of, uh, of course, famous artists in the way, in, in the uh, two-dimensional form, painting. Uh, Audubon, of course, was the original. Uh, interesting fellow, came to Kentucky in the early 1800s when there wasn't much here and spent a lot of time, as you know, up uh, along the Ohio River uh, um, and in and around the Henderson area where the Audubon uh, Museum now is and sketched and painted birds. And um, 
Uh, he was probably the first person in America to really capture the, the, na the native birds. Dr. Goodwin also credits naturalist artist Chuck Kroom and wildfowl carvers Floyd Schultz and Bob Googie as mentors. But for the time being, he's happy to show off his work at his newly opened studio and occasionally have a piece accepted for exhibition. It's just a matter, I think, of liking it, uh, liking what you're doing. You start creating something, it gives you some kind of a good feeling and uh, you just continue building on that. And Each piece you do, you try to make better than the last one.